everyone, I'm going to be talking about um, the Truffle Debugger and how it keeps track of mapping keys. Um, so this is the thing that the Truffle Debugger does, right? So the Solidity language famously does not know what a mapping keys are. And in the debugger, when we are uh, displaying variables at a given point in the transaction, we want to be able to show uh, what is contained in the mappings. But this requires knowing what keys are. And well, that's not possible in general, but we can at least keep track of the keys that were used in a given transaction. Um, and we can even do this um, when we've got, you know, uh, nested mappings like here. Um, I've got this uh, function that does a bunch of crazy things with mappings nested inside other things. But if we uh, run this in the debugger and we skip to the end, um, it's all there. You've got this map inside this struct, inside this array, and you've got you've got all this. Um, but that's actually the, the the nested mappings things. That's actually not what I want to focus on right now. Um, let's close that down. Um, I want to focus on something that looks a lot simpler. Um, let's look at this test. Um, this sets up a bunch of uh, things in mappings that look very straightforward. We've just got, you know, we've got a Boolean mapping, some bytes mapping, some integer mappings, an address mapping. And, you know, if we uh, skip to the end, um, just a moment there. We can see uh, it's it's all there, um, but the surprising thing is that um, let me close this down. Uh, the surprising thing is that keeping track of all this is a bit more complicated than you might expect. Um, well, so I mean, the first question is how do we do it at all? And the basic answer, um, which uh, I've sort of typed up on the right here, uh, on the left I've got the relevant part of the code, which I'm afraid is rather opaque, but uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see there's an, uh, this is, so the basic version is that, you know, so the, the Truffle debugger, in order to tell where we are in the code, right, it uses the uh, source maps that Solidity provides, right? We have the bytecode, we have the source map, uh, we know where we are in the bytecode, we know, we can find where we are in the source, and then we can, the other thing it uses is the AST, uh, the abstract syntax tree representation of the source that Solidity provides. So if we have where we are in the source, we can then map that to a particular node in the abstract syntax tree, and we can there, therefore use various information about that node. So the basic version of how this works is that whenever we um, are on a node and are processing the node, and it corresponds to an expression, we store the top word of the stack as that node finishes, um, and we associate it to that node as well as to the current stack frame and similar stuff. And I said the top word of the stack. Some types, you know, use up more than a word on the stack. So really, it's the top n words of the stack is appropriate, one or two. Um, and then whenever we get to an index axis for a mapping, where we're accessing one of those mapping values, right? Um, we decode. We, we look at the expression that is the index and we decode it and then we say, okay, that's our mapping key. Let's associate it to that mapping. Um, so this is pretty simple and it works fairly well. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a pretty good system that Nick came up with, um, but there are some wrinkles in it. Um, and so first off, what do I mean when I say associated to that mapping? Um, here is, come on. <laughs> um, yeah, as you can see, I have sort of a text slides here. Um, what does it mean when I say associated to that mapping? An, er an early version associated to mapping's AST node, that obviously has various problems. So, okay, so I mean associated to the address and the storage slot. How do we get the storage slot? Same mechanism. When we pass over the uh, node that is the corresponds to the mapping itself, that we're indexing into, um, right? We store the top word of the stack, and you know that's our, that's our pointer. And we actually do a bit more than that in order to keep track of some other information. But I don't want to go into that here because then I would not uh, 
there, there, uh, then I would not have time for the rest of the talk. Okay, so we have this basic version. Um, and now we start getting to the wrinkles and the reason that uh, handling all these things is not actually so simple. Um, so, oh boy, I'm, I'm kind of about to uh, spill the secret sauce here, I guess, but uh, hey, our debugger is uh, open sauce, so uh, it's no secret. Anyway, so what about these string literals here? Um, that doesn't seem like a problem. They're just string literals, right? Um, except, the thing is, th think about the, the, the process I described for how we handle these things. Um, in order to get the information for the index node, we have to step through that node at some point. There has to be some actual EVM instruction in the bytecode that is source mapped to that range of the code. And for some nodes, that doesn't happen. And string literals are an example of this. I say string literals, I mean also hex literals. Um, right, I mean, those are considered by Solidity bit to be essentially the same thing. And so what's our solution to this? So uh, let me actually go into the code here, into the the code mapping key saga. Um, oh yeah, we've got this tiny bit of code here for cleaning booleans to handle uh, out of range booleans, make sure they can treat it as true. I'm not gonna go in any more into that. Um, and, oh, by the way, you may notice, why is there a loop here? We, we're decoding mapping keys, right? It's just like what I said, doesn't involve any sort of looping process. Why is there a loop? We're gonna get to that, but one thing at a time. So, in order to handle string literals, we've got this special thing where before the main case down here, uh, this, this here is the main case. But before that, we've got this special case to handle string literals and actually some other things if you go ahead and read the comments I've written there, um, where if, it's our, if our index is a simple constant which includes string literals, we don't use the stack at all, we just read it, we just read the information straight out of the AST. Um, this object here is uh, one of our internal pointer objects that we use for indicating uh, data locations, such as a place, a spot on the stack, a spot in memory, and whatever. And in this case, it represents not a spot in memory or storage or whatever, but a spot in the AST that we are going to read the data out of. Okay, that lets us handle string literals. Um, so there, here's our revised process. We're going to do what I said. Every time we process the node, we're going to put the top word of the stack or the top two words. And then when we get the index axis, we're going to read the data off the stack for the, for the index, and we're going to decode that. And that's going to be our mapping key, except for string literals, where then we'll read it out of the AST itself. But, um, oh, the next problem is what I already said. Not all types can take up just one word on the stack. That's easy enough to handle some types of take of two words on the stack. I already mentioned that, let's skip it. Okay, so we got a reprised version of what I said. But there's another problem. Um, decoding pointers, so I, I, I skipped over this before. I said, oh, let's just decode the data from the stack. Now, what if it's a pointer to memory or to storage or to call data? Well, by itself, that's not a problem. Our decoder knows how to handle that. It's, it, 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 it knows to go look up the appropriate information in memory or storage for call data. But there is a little bit of a problem with um, making sure it knows the right type here. So let's, if we look at the code here, we see this um, crazy thing where I've got a splice definition. Um, sorry, some of these names are a little out of date, misleading. The definition here, might be a better thought of as node. We've got a spliced node where we take two different AST nodes and we kind of splice them together. And why on earth would we do that? Well, we wanted to code according, right? So when we wanted to code, right? Obviously, Solidity is a statically typed language. So if we wanted to code data, we need to know in advance what type we're decoding. And if we have a mapping and its keys are strings, it will be reported as its keys being, in, in the AST, it will say the keys are memory strings. But we might be giving it to a pointer to a storage string or a call data string. 
Now, in general, we wanted to code according to the type of the mapping's keys, right? Not the type of the particular expression, because there might be, you know, an implicit conversion, right? So we wanted to code according to the type of the mapping's keys. But if the type of the map of keys says memory string, and we're actually dealing with a storage string or a call data string, we're going to get nonsense. The decoder is going to re-pointer as entirely the wrong type of pointer. It's going to look in entirely the wrong place. So we have to do this sort of crazy splicing thing where we take the the the, the key, the, the node for the, the that defines the mapping keys and splice onto it the location of the actual index expression. That's where you've got this splice location function here. All right, all right, we've got that, we've got that, we've handled that. We've got a revised process here. We're gonna decode the word from the stack, but for string literals, we're going to read the value from the AST instead. And also we have to do the splicing thing. But what if the key is a constant state variable? Because remember what I said earlier is that in order for our process to work, the key has to be um, source mapped to at some point. There must be some actual, right? We have to actually step through that key. And for constant state variables, this doesn't happen. Now, if the constant state variable is part of a larger expression that's the key, this is fine. But if that is the entire key, it's just going to get skipped over and it won't work. So what we have to do is here is the case for handling constant state variables. This one is kind of a nesting nightmare to some extent. Um, if it's a constant state variable, what we have to do is we have to look up the definition of that constant state variable. We have to look at the, the node that where we have, we have to look at that um, index node and we have to say, oh, this is a constant state variable and its definition is over here and look at that AST node, and then we can read the information out of that, um, assuming it's a fairly simple constant anyway. If you do something crazy in your um, constant definition, we might run into some trouble and we might fail to uh, keep track of the key. Um, but I'm assuming that's a fairly minor case. Um, regardless, I like to be comprehensive. So uh, we, we can handle you know most constant state variables. Okay. Okay. We've got, we, we can handle ordinary keys, handle pointers, we can handle string literals, we can't cancel constant state variables. But what if the key is a hexadecimal literal and the key type is a, a byte's end? Like what if it's being used as a byte's end rather than as an integer? Um, which, you know, is something that I, you know, I made sure best here. And now like, why would this, why would this be a problem at all? Well, here's the thing. Um, a hexadecimal literal, from Solidity's point of view, that's an integer. So when we put the key, uh, when we put the, 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 the raw key data on the stack, it's going to go on the stack as an integer, left padded, right? It, right aligned. So if you do this with 0xff here, it's going to go on the stack with 0xff on the end here. But this is a byte, not an integer, and those are right padded, left aligned. The actual value of the mapping key that would is used is this. So if we were, if we didn't have any special handling, um, we would get, we would put on the wrong mapping key and we would, I mean, we'd be looking in the wrong place. I mean, you know, the, the decoder would just be like, it would just look at this first byte here and be like, oh, I guess the mapping key is 0x00. Zero zero zero. Um, and that's not correct. Okay, so cool. if we go back to the code here, you may notice, you may have noticed a while back when I was talking about uh, string literals, the code here talks about, it's not just for handling string literals, it's for handling hexadecimal literals too. And there's some special stuff in the decoder so that it knows that when it's reading, uh, a, I mean, I say hexadecimal literals, really it covers any numeric literal. Um, that, but it, it knows when it's reading a numeric literal from the AST, so both string and numeric literals will read them out of the AST instead of from the stack, 
And it knows when it's doing this um, that if it's decoding as a byte sand, it has to shift it appropriately. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question? Uh, what? Sorry. Can I ask a question? Yes. Can you go back to the back to the one slide? So you said that the constant is put right aligned onto the stack. Is it then discarded when the mapping location is computed? No, of course not. Obviously, it has to be left shifted in order to be used. But okay, but we have time it's yeah. from the stack is right aligned. Okay, then yeah. Yes, it's not, yes, you're right that obviously it has to be left shifted in order to be used. So obviously it goes onto the stack as that at some point. But the question is, does it go onto that as a stack at the point you can capture? Um, this actually gets into some stuff I skipped over. Um, so normally we assume when we get to a node that the last map structure for that node, that the next thing on the stack is what we want. Um, there's actually some cases where that's not true because it goes into unmapped code. Um, and so we have to look ahead to the next map instruct map instruction. Um, when I say map to unmap, I really mean like you know map to minus one. You know, in solidity internal step. And so um, it's actually possible that this could be, have been handled by that system. Um, I haven't checked that. That system actually came later chronologically, so I never thought to check that. Um, Regardless, in this case, reading it out of the ASP is how we could do handle it. It's possible we could handle it instead by looking a little bit ahead instead. But I haven't checked, right? I mean, the problem has to. It, the problem is that it has to be at a point that we can detect and know. Aha! This is where it is. Um. So, yeah. Anyway, there is one remaining problem, um, and you'll notice I still have not explained the the answer to the question. Why on earth is there a loop here? Um, so let's skip down to the bottom of this loop. And you will see why there is a loop here. Or a better way of saying this is the example. So um, here I have this address map. And for a while, what would happen is this uh, first assignment, this, this first assignment would work fine. We'd keep track of it fine. But the second one wouldn't. And I thought, is there a problem with addresses? No, the problem has nothing to do with addresses. Um, the problem has to do with certain type conversions. Address this doesn't work as a mapping key, or didn't, it does now, obviously, but it didn't work as a mapping key because the address conversion from contract at the EVM level, it's a no op. There's no actual EVM instruction that corresponds to the address conversion. So there's no instruction to get source mapped to it, which means once again, no value gets stored. So, and, and you can see this with other type conversions as well, uh, as, as well. So like byte one, that would work fine because that type conversion involves a shift. Um, this is sort of, the, um, but address this or int one, those are no ops, so the, the problem would occur. Um, and in sufficiently old solidity, there was unary plus, which is another no op. Um, so, by the way, this is kind of the opposite problem of the hexadecimal literal problem, right? So this this problem is where there is a conversion in the source code, but no actual instruction in the EVM. Whereas the um, hexadecimal literal problem was there was a conversion instruction in the EVM but no corresponding node in the source code. Um, and fortunately, that's the only type conversion, type, type to type conversion where that happens. But there's several sorts of type conversions where this happens, where it's at the EVM level, it's a NOAA. So how do we handle this? Well, if our decoding has failed thus far, and the node type for the index expression is a type conversion, um, we, we have to make sure that it has failed this far because if, if you know if it's, if it's a type conversion that isn't a no op, then we don't want to do this. Um, but in that case, you know things will have worked already. So, but if it's a type, if it's if it's if things have failed thus far and it's a type conversion, then we look inside. Uh, oops. And we look inside the arguments of that type conversion and we try again. 
And similarly with unary plus, if you're using really old solidity, is we will look inside the unary plus, and then we will go back to the top of the loop and try the whole thing again. And that's how we're able to handle these knob type conversions. And so with this revised, that's why there's a loop in math and key decoding. And with this revised process with all these wrinkles, we are able to handle and keep track of basically any mapping key you can throw at us, except maybe really complicated constant state variables, but that's not a common thing. We, we can handle pretty much any mapping key you can throw at us. And that is how the truffle debugger does it. 